Some bullshit. Look, we're recording. It's been started. Okay, okay. Okay. So here we are in the back history. It's dark as hell, which is why everyone's. So, Charles gonna take up the tale. He's like, so this is uh, how nearly every culture from the world that Garrett and Lauren came from was eradicated. Is that what? Is that, uh, well, an alternate but still possible version of myself who did it. Like, full frontal is it? It's like, no, not like full frontal, but like me. It's like, basically, succeeded in dropping Axis on the Earth and during the fight with Amaro and everything got fucked up. And later it's like, Char Asimov did the thing! Just, huh? And he's like, oh shit, I can't, I can't let everybody know that I saw a video where that had happened on Amy's world. Fuck. So Diana is like, Tifa, please, reach out to the new type in Dome and talk to him. So Tifa's like, hi Dome, how you doing? And it's uh, so that, uh, yeah, so he's like, you talk to and uh, to the new type spirit of Dome so that Diana and the spirit can do their ultimate duty and reveal how the Dome came to be. He's like, okay, Dome, let's go. All the lights go on his Dome. It's like, hello, Tifa, I've been awaiting this day. And he says that he's, uh, He's been expecting this day to come for a long time. In his dreams, he's seen information from the outside world from his uh, still functioning uh, external senses. Uh, he mentions that, um, like, he knows who the Gargantia people are, and Rack is like, Oh, wow, I'm surprised that you, even people on the moon have heard of me, Queen of the Sea. And then uh, Lado's like, oh, all right, I can calm down. But Dome confirms that Lado and Amy are from uh, its own Earth. They come from um, Dome's Earth. And uh, he welcomes Lado back from his uh, journey among the stars. He's like, wait, 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 you come from the UCW? He's like, yeah, we found some data on a machine. He's like, wait, you didn't tell us? He's like, yeah. Nothing, I'm sure Lado had a good reason. And Dome said, I don't blame him for not sharing uh, the proof he found in the ruins sooner. He says, um, Toledo's people, the Earth is the origin of that which they hate most dearly. The Hideyuse, and it's fucked up. But then, uh, to proceed in order, the black history began with Char Asnable's colony drop and the, and the ensuing nuclear winter. Uh, even that, and Char Char's like, yeah, I fucked up. Char and Amro fought and they dropped the rock on that's fucked up. Says, but even that, wasn't enough to stop mankind's thirst for fighting each other, much less uh, every alien race that visited. And uh, this is the dreadful tale of the Moonlight Butterfly that blasted Earth uh, back to the Stone Age, where the Moonlight Butterfly, which is the attack that Almero and Lauren have been doing for a long time, and Charles has been getting in on it too sometimes. It just shoots out nano machines, and at full power, it could like the field goes from Earth to Jupiter and d destroys all inorganic material. Which is fucked up that people from space would make that, considering they need an organic material to you know not be exposed to the vacuum of space and die. But I mean, I guess when you make something that destructive, you're pretty much at the fuck everything stage. So. But basically, the Moonlight Butterfly fucked everything. Um, but, up until that point, um, certain humans were involved in schemes to restore the Earth's habitat. Uh, one of them was the Green Earth uh, Bug Project, and that's the nano machines that we know, and is the thing that makes the... And the Gargantua was one mothership part, as part of the nano machine things. And that's why the sea glows green on the Green Earth, and why it's green. And it's like, and it's like, who knows what could have been accomplished if such plans had uh, been allowed to come to fruition? But the Moonlight Butterfly couldn't, like, have not been released because uh, bad shit happened. Uh, some humans, despairing of their tainted Earth, ventured out among the, star the stars, and these evolvers, which is what he says down the top line. 
um, modified their own flesh for rapid a uh, adaptation to whatever habitable planet they might find, and the result was the Hideyuse. And it's like, wow, later you didn't tell anyone? He's like, no, I, I didn't tell anyone because I have literally no importance at all on the plot. Sorry, everybody. Tarada lied. But yeah, Lado says that the whale squids were one manifestation of that and they're adapted to live under the sea. And it just so happened that it had uh, less aggression than the space city you say. And it's basically in line with the Evolve's ultimate goal of survival. And the Hideous they came to cast away culture when it no longer served any purpose for just making them be alive. And Osmo's like, wow, you can't even call creatures like that human. And Lado says, that's what Chamber said. And presumably the people in the Galactic Alliance at the top knew this, reached the same conclusion, uh, put, like on their way to declaring war with the Hideyuse. Um But for Lado, the prospect of having killed the countless human-ish people led him to an existential crisis. Uh, the good news is that that made him throw away his previous belief system and that's why he's got his new self-sufficient deal. And Amuro is like, just think about now what you'll do when uh, you see the Hideyuse next, while you still have the luxury of time, instead of you get there and you seem like, ah, fuck. But that wasn't all. After the Evolvers left, the remaining humans uh, decided to move to the moon and the colonies to wait environmental restoration. And that's the foundation. Yeah, he mentions colonies there. And that was the foundation of the Moon Race and the Space Revolutionary Army. Uh, opinion uh, fractured over time, leading to some to return to Earth and dwell in enviro sealed domes, or else in high temperature zones where the pollution um, was at its least. And the domes being where people lived in uh, King Gainer, um, the Innocent in um, Zabungal, and Paradigm City Swarov. Sort of, it's a special one. And then another contingent decided uh, again to head out even further into space, but it's baseline humans only, and they became the Human Galactic Alliance. And then the Dome here, uh, on the second line, mentions Vader and says that Dome and Vader have been built for the same purpose and share access codes for each other's database. It's like, wait, what? And Garrett is like, oh, that's how I could use the satellite can in the ADW, even though, like, you weren't here in real. And uh, that implies that Eole Schoenberg uh, knew about parallel universes long before the very first dimensional quake that fucked everything. And uh, this isn't the first thing uh, we encountered that exists in multiple parallel worlds, because there's Chrono as well, because they're a bunch of shitheads. And uh, they were in on Dome's construction, and uh, they are Diana's ancestors in the Soleil House's former membership of Chrono. And she's like, yeah, I used to be in. It's like, oh yeah, thanks for telling us, Diana, we, but we know you're good, so it's no, no big deal. Uh, by the time Diana became Queen of the Moon, Chrono had already lost its meaning, really, and Diana knew only, them only as, as a name, not a purpose. But the Dome itself knows all. And uh, it... it describes the darkness of the black history, which Camille then repeats, and uh, it says that even it never expected to have to tell this tale. And it begin it explains the true meaning of the moonlight butterfly, which was not simply dispersed indiscriminately, as the tales tell. Uh, Chrono themselves have decided that mankind, mu mankind must be deprived of culture in fulfilment of their mandate to rein in human evolution and its finest flowering, being new types. Oh, he let you put on the evil lighting. Chrono did it. To stop new types. And then, um, Dome apparently, like, actually scoffs and is like, I can't believe that Chrono uh, misunderstood uh, what new types were so massively and how they fixated on their special abilities as though that was what evolution was really about. And Tifa's sad because she's a wangy new type. And, um... Uh, the Dome's current form, one sort of ultimate evolutionary outcome, is thanks to the law of unintended consequences. And, it inter and how that interfered with Chrono's actions. And uh, this explains to Chirico why the Dome reminded him so much of Wise Man. And it's another being whose soul was transferred into a machine. And Titan's like, what the fuck? 
And the dome said it was no uh, accident that it was constructed on the moon, in it, which is the first stepping stone of mankind on its journey into space. The moon is also the origin of Laplace's box. And uh, Belanger's like, what the fuck? It's like, we don't have time for that. And then uh, the dome is about to explain why the moon is so special when Mikage shows up. They're like, Howdy! It's me! And he starts wrecking everything. But Dome was telling the story! Stop attacking everything! And then the Dome apologizes to Chief for not being able to tell her the truth, but the time has finally come for him to sleep forever. And he uh, freed from this accursed eternal life. And it's only the living uh, that the right to die is granted, and only because of its transience that life has beauty. And uh, he wants to die. And everyone's like, damn, no one died. And then Mikage says that mankind um, can't handle the truth, and that the mere act of hearing it would imprison them, uh, would imprison us all to heaven, hell. Ten Goku. And he's decided uh, to play with us for a bit. It's like Mikage's in there, and straight here is like, I guess he's like actually scared of. The truth that's now hit, like that we'll never get. But he was obviously pretty scared of it to show up and blow it up, right? And here's all the bullshit. Freaking Mikage's shitty space army. But we get a beep, and uh, Dome's final act was to fully unlock the microwave transmission facilities, which uh, basically lets Garrett fire the satellite cannon one turn always. Because before, like, in the old games, garbage. Fucking took forever to charge up, couldn't use it. This game, he starts with one and he can use it one turn if it's, the moon is out or he's in space, or every two turns otherwise, but now it's every turn. Every time he can fire another one if he's got the juice. And the Tifa's like, yeah, Dome, you did it! He's like, Tifa, Tifa, it feels like, it feels like she's in here, what the heck? And he was like, yep, Garrett, I'm here to, like, Help you fire the damn thing, and it's time for some goddamn payback. And then Lori's like, Harry, get Diana out of here. He's like, Yeah, I'm fucking looking after her, dude. Check it out. Okay, so who do I want to sing to now? Yes, here's a good one. Try again. Oh, here we go. Try again. Isn't Brian this horrific superhero and every week could be hard on Demil? Yeah, just don't tell him. It's alright. What a shot. I read some interesting uh, facts about the Z games. There's um, Kira's ace conversation in the first game. Uh, AG tells Kira that um, now that he's aced, he's got to keep it up as befitting of the main character. Of, and uh, Kira's like, hmm. I suppose you're right. I suppose I am the main character. Which is the Destiny joke where Shin was meant to be the main character and then he really fucking wasn't after like two episodes.
sure. Of course I can get one. What else did I read that was good? <laughs> Thanks, Sanor. Um, oh, when Rand looks at the porn on the internet and, um, it's like, why don't you just fucking marry a cow if you, like, uh, other that big? And then even Tifa looks at him, he's like, mm, how fucking dare you? Um. Oh, after the DLC stage where the Aquarian kids learn the Dogeza, which is the the bow to say you're sorry, he teaches it to Sosuke so he can say sorry properly to Chidori because he's going to need it. Because of how much he uh, makes her mad as heck all the time. Um, well, when the martial artists from Full Metal Panic challenge Camille, Sosuke, and Hibiki to keep Chidori from tearing down the dojo, one of them says, "Who's Ka like? Who the hell are you?" And Camille's like, "I'm Camille." And he's like, "That's a girl's name." And then Camille beats the shit out of him, which we know. But then after that, Far's like, "Hey, attack someone because your name's how you ended up getting into the A AUG in the first place." And Camille had never told anybody that because he didn't see when he starts off where he joined. And they're like, "Wait, really?" He's like, "Please, just don't tell Shin." He respects me too much, he'd be destroyed if he found out I was an asshole. Esther and the bunny suit's good. Oh, when um, Osma is picking who's going to bodyguard Ranker, he's, he says to Athrun, I don't trust you. He's like, wait, well, why? And then um, he's like, Renton can do it, because he's harmless. Because he's too dedicated to Eureka. And then Athrun's like, I'm harmful? But it was all a big scheme anyway. Fun though. Uh, oh, lock on. Setson, look at all the Gundams we've got now. They look like Gundams, but hmm? I want to be Gundam like them as well. And then Hira says, then together we shall become Gundam, Setsuna. And then Kira says, only through understanding can we all become Gundam. And then Shin says, will I become Gundam? And Luna just rolls her eyes and is like, oh, you too, idiot. Fuck me. We got the SR point, right? Right? We got the SR point, right? After I killed Dabaran? Like, I'm pretty sure we got it. It's a bit much even for them, but that's fine. Yeah, it's the going for the bunny suit. He's like, ding, 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 ding. It's like, Esther, why do you have your triangle? It's like, well, you're wearing your bunny suit. I'm bringing my work tools in as well. He's like, oh, jeez. Like, I'm not frustrated. Just because I'm not beautiful or graceful or good at serving. And then Sidu says, to a destructive delivery. <laughs> Fucking C2, she's good. Oh, when they do the love thing that I mentioned the other day, Jiren like is like, I confess his love of lizard stew. 
And then Luna is like, Hey Shin, who do you love? And he's like, uh, uh, uh. I, she's like, she actually says like, what do you design? Like, who do you design? And he says, uh, defending peace? She's like, oh, you fucking. Um. Mm, that's fine. Oh, they do the ping pong tournament from Gravian, and Amaro just uh, beats Camille and Coast team because he's using his new type powers to geo ping pong. Sitsuko gets really drunk and can't handle her booze, and then Sandman beats everybody with a sandal instead of a paddle, and then he calls out his attacks. He's like, Gravion backhand! Shirabin friends. Classic bullshit, those idiots being friends. Um, in one of the save game things, when you save mid thing and then quit, uh, Noriko and Nono play with Noriko's action figure collection, and Nono's like, "Oh, I know this one now! With true hero justice, and they make noises." He says the last voice line in the game, and that's the entire Zizaga, and he started the mess, so makes sense. That's good, that's neat. That's a neat tooch. What the Zama's gonna beat you up? The, no, the she's not Noriko's not secretly an otaku, but it is low key in the show. In the uh, audio drama, apparently they go like full on on it. Ah, 
Uh, we're gonna go in with Daiton on this one. If you've seen his armor, can't shoot. Stupid abductor trying to dodge into his body. Ah, oh, and they didn't even get him. Uh oh! Bad feeling about this, and it's Mekage. The mythical Aquarian. Apollo's friggin' Aquarian was it? It's mine, actually. Mekage's like, I'm gonna blow up Dome! Get the my shitty friends. So he's gonna destroy Dome, and he's gonna get Lady Diana! Lauren is like, oh, it's good. And Mikhail's like, actually, I'm gonna blow up the whole fucking moon. Fuck it. Fuck everything. And then uh, Dinah here tells, uh. Lauren Seahack uh, that he need not um, fight back against this ruffian. Lady Diana. It says, while my forefathers may have destroyed much uh, of life on Earth, they also protected much, nurtured it through the centuries, and let it blossom anew. And it says, the moonlight butterfly uh, isn't uh, merely the evolutionary dead end that Mikage um, claims. But the white doll is more than just that. The white doll can protect people. And uh, then it says that, it says, um, the moonlight butterfly uh, like did not wipe out humanity entirely, like Mikage is saying that it would. And it's uh, now fighting to defend those it once attacked. And Diana, seeing that Lauren's faith is still strong, uh, releases the seals on the Moonlight Butterfly. And now uh, he can use it as he wishes. The Moonlight Butterfly system's fully unlocked. Let's go, Lauren. And now he's got the energy drain attack. Wow, the Moonlight Butterfly just drained the energy from all those dudes. It just it drains like 300 energy from every like every enemy in the area. And it's a fucking huge area. And gives the turn A like all of that. And this energy absorption and synthesis is uh, as key to the nanomachines as the ones in the seas around Gargantia. And it's the final step of the culture of fire. And so they all leave because they can't do shit. Mikage's mad as hell. Stupid blood fly fucking it up. Jamil then gets on the phone. He's like, "Hey guys, don't worry about uh, the rest of the cities and the other cities on the moon, because uh, I got this covered." It's like, "Hey, it's the other old dude." He's like, "Yeah, we got the colonies." Like, and there's uh, Roy, uh, Whitson, Royby. He's like, "You just concentrate on blowing the shit out of the cargo." Then. Diana declares that Mikage is a pitiable being. He's like, what the? And she says, uh, to humans uh, deprived of eternity directly, it's the mingling of one uh, with another that creates the bridge from past to future. And he says, uh, let's uh, show this asshole what that brings. And he's like, oh, fuck all y'all. You're all fucking assholes. I hate all y'all. Y'all y'all don't know nothing about love. Oh, not that one. I want to... Yeah, that's the one. Then back to Yunaha. Malloy is another. Um, good choice because he gives all of the attacks uh, armor down. And uh, Zeska just gives. Like plus five percent damage or something. Might be like point one five, so it might be fifteen percent damage. That's <laughs> This is where it turns out the Lord was a genocidal asshole. Yeah, I imagine like that'd be fucked up, but he's been playing the long game. I've got to like 
actually move things over to this idiot. And Thief is there now. I can't even go fast, fuck me. Yeah, so Garrod says some shit, and then we've got Alto Garrod. Lauren. Amada versus him. Uh, Alto versus Makage. Alto always talks to Makage because he kidnapped Cheryl and Anchor all the time and they got the same voice actor. And he says, Oh, sinful wingless, I see you still haven't grasped the foolishness of your actions. So I don't know what you're going on about, but I'm not letting you take Cheryl and Anchor again. It's like, good, good. Two women and one man. That's precisely what will weave the tapestry of my dream. Wow, Makage, just uh, letting it all hang out there, buddy. And this thing that like doesn't even have a L3 gen, it sucks. And sphere act. This one I didn't who and holler on. I only mean, who didn't holler on everybody though, didn't I? Okay, so because they're not at 150 yet, they're still not good. It's not rowdy. But I'm pretty sure Hibiki's hit invincible point now, if he does get hit. Like he's a tough dude, his robot's good, he's got max prevail, he's a pretty spicy guy. I wish they could go like one square further. I can't believe none of this city helps. space out of it, but it's not like, incredible, is it? And Noriko's still not... Oh, she's got brave though! Oh, 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 oh! Oh, oh, oh. Now that dude's dead. Matt Cross attack him. Do the Daedalus. Strength of a god. First he slaps you and then the arms come out. I can't believe he did 10 damage to Noriko. Ridiculous. Mikage has got no fashion sense. No style. 
and no grace. She pulled the cape out though. Poor coach, they let me let myself get attacked out here like that. Luckily, the bullshit only lasts like a turn, I guess, because she's cute. Oh no, isn't she immune? Yeah, she's immune. She's immune to pilot effects. So she just, she's just like, I'm gonna lower your morale, and he's like, whatever, fucking dude. Definitely not gonna lower my SP. Let's do this, not Toma. Ain't anything that can stand up to mine and Tifa's love. What is a pathetic wingless snow of love? Jealous, are ya? You? You're a real sad case, guy. Do you wish to anger me so? I'll be sure to grant you a most painful death. Your threats don't do jack, buddy. I told you, ain't anything that can stand up to us. <laughs> Gary, do you know who you're dealing with? <laughs> And if you thought not, Mikage says, uh, Tifa ain't in here, but it feels like she's right beside me. Nothing to worry about now. I see all this through. Ah, <sighs> why is it so cool? I have to defend Tifa! Doesn't even have an actual like her animation, it just like moves a little bit and it tilts backwards. Fuck me, get out of here. Trash man. His Mikono. Stop this! I don't. Silence. Shut up. Silence. Everything would have been perfect if only you didn't exist. The machine angel is already in my hands. Now, let's see if I can dispel even a sliver of my hatred by tearing you limb from limb. Mikai, do you know? Do you know who you're dealing with? You're dealing with the second worst main character of all time. Oh, and then died on fucking bopped him. Bopped him good. waiting for uh, power to the dream power to the dream <laughs> 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 
next uh, morale up. Yes! Can I fix this dude double large? Yeah. Some shit we can do first, though, right? these apples. Yeah, that's it. There's nobody left we can do it on. If you can even do so 100 in the list game. Do not have any armor reducers, do we? No. No. That's fine. Get him, Noriko! Um, Mikage calls Lauren the owner of the Wings of Destruction, and Lauren says he won't deny that name, but he doesn't turn Ace Paradox just solely for that. And he says the White Doll is vicinity is buddying God, and now it will be defended the entire world. And, um,. Amada tells Mikagi he won't allow his hatred to blanket the world, and Mikagi just says, Wing the dog, I'm not about to lend my ear to your barking. He's like, I'll show you how strong the power of the power you reject truly is, and then you beat the shell. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Nani? Oh, poor buddy. So, we bop him and he suddenly he's like, whatever. I'll see if you're fit for the final battle. And he wants to just shut the fuck up, Mikage. He's like, well, I'm out. Bye. Uh-oh! A horde of space monsters are approaching the green earth! So I guess we gotta go! And Mikage then laughs. He's like, what's so funny? He's like, well, good luck fighting Baal, you guys... Yeah, he's like, oh, you don't know anything. See, good luck fighting the Baal, or whatever. Because obviously they're not Baal, they're actually our friends. And everyone's like, that dude! Where does he get off? Fuck him in his hole. Anyway, we gotta go. See ya, Harry, line up. Hey, Diana, I will use the white doll to protect everybody, then I will be back. So we leave. Diana confirms that Dome is uh, asleep this time, and probably for good this time. And uh, she's decided to swap places with uh, Kiel once again, once this war's over. 
and uh, the legacy of Chrono uh, in her blood should end with her. And if uh, precognition about this world achieving true peace comes true, then uh, the world will have no further need for her. And uh, she's lived too long as it is. I mean, mostly it was asleep, but I mean, fair enough. Oh, that's a, uh, apparently a thing in the first game as well, that the bathhouse thing. Uh, Mars goes, I got a bad feeling about this, and Kuno's like, oh, that's your precognition ability, right? And he's like, no, just a hunch from experience, because he knows everyone's an idiot. What's up, Makoto? He's like, I feel bad about fighting the man. I'm sorry. I feel bad. He's like, it's okay, Makoto. Mikono, 12,000, no, the 24,000 year cycle. Oh, it's all shit. But AG is like, Garrett and Lauren's time. It's like, what is it, AG? You seem, like, scared. And he's like, it's because you've got fucking strategic uh, class weaponry now. You've got, they've been like butterfly and the satellite cannon. I mean, you've had that all the time, but now it's full on bullshit. And uh, then AG's like, but luckily, you're both good kids, and I'm sure you can be trusted to fight for mankind. And then uh, they split the business business thing. He's like, oh, nice work. Never seen it split by two boys before. And then AG's shitty. Oh, it's the Alpha Zero. We fucking got it. Way, way, way. No, no, sell a cake. Okay, let's, uh...